It's fair to say that I've developed some of the riskiest aviation itineraries out there. From flying three airlines in one day to attempting six flights in one day, I've pushed the airline system to the limit, and this might be the flight that we find out on. Today we're going to be flying on Southwest Airlines with their Boeing 737 MAX 8 from New Orleans to St. Louis. This is going to be a blast regardless, and I'm super excited for this. So let's go ahead and get started everybody. Welcome to New Orleans International Airport on this beautiful spring afternoon. I've just arrived on board a Frontier Airbus A321 from Orlando, and despite a three-hour delay. I was somehow still able to make the flight to St. Louis as it was delayed by over an hour and I planned a two hour layover here. I completely lucked out with the timing. Feel free to check out my Frontier trip report and did I make my connection part two as those videos go into the full detail of how we got to this point. In addition, making the flight was also relieving as now I'm under a Southwest connection so worst case scenario I'll be able to get a flight home covered tomorrow if I misconnect in St. Louis. With all this established, after arriving three hours late from Frontier, I ran from gate A4 to B2 within 120 seconds. I arrived with three passengers left in the C group and my stress was relieved once more. I can't believe we're standing here right now, but here at gate B2 houses the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 8 registered November 8824 Quebec. Since I'm the last passenger to board, I have a $20 bill ready as I'm not expecting any windows to be available, so I hope somebody would be willing to give up their window seat in this case. I don't want to get left behind though, so let's go ahead and get on board and appreciate how I somehow made this flight. And somehow, some way, I ended up getting 24F, a perfect wing view window seat. I can't believe that I walked out with this outstanding view, but we still have another flight that we're going to try to go make. So let's go ahead and push back everybody. Be sure to stay on the lookout for all the in-flight videos that still will be coming out very soon. And here we go for our takeoff and runway 29 at New Orleans International Airport, everybody. Be sure to stay on the lookout for the full takeoff videos that will be coming out very soon. What a surreal takeoff feeling that was. Let's go ahead and climb up to our cruising altitude to 35,000 feet, everybody. Alrighty everybody, welcome to our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. So let's go ahead and dive into a little bit of an assessment to keep our mind off of this very tight connection that we're going to have at St. Louis. So let's just go ahead and get into all these feelings, guys. Speaking of which, the feeling of being on this flight right now is truly surreal. I know I just said that we need to get our minds off of the whole situation in general right now, but to even make this flight considering what this day has led up to is just truly surreal. So it's just tough not to think about that in this moment. But let's go ahead and talk about some other components of this flight in the segment to really give us 
some depth here as of to what we're doing. So let's go ahead and get into all those factors. So first and foremost, this is a five-year-old Boeing 737 MAX 8 at the time of filming this video, which is November 8824 Quebec. These new Maxes are super cool and I've really enjoyed flying them despite all the issues that Boeing and Southwest have had with the aircraft type. So certainly still really cool to get to check out this one on this particular day. And I believe it was only my second or third 737 MAX for Southwest to this point. So again, really great and super lucky to get this beautiful view of 24F. It is a really great scene as you can see. You can get the whole wing view there and overall it just looks really great. So certainly very fortunate to get to exhibit that right there. And once again, really enjoyed that to say the least right there. Uh, speaking of the Southwest Max situation, I just thought I would talk about that a little bit. I made a video a few weeks ago regarding the whole situation. So feel free to check that out. But long story short, Southwest has got shorted over half the planes that they expected to get in 2024. And as such, they are uh, really scaling back on several frequencies and even destinations as they'll be terminating four cities. They'll be Bellingham, Washington, Syracuse, New York, Houston, George Bush Airport. And the last one is Cosmel, Mexico, all in August of 2024. So very sad to see this. Southwest usually does not pull out of any cities. So this is certainly uh, quite a monumental situation here for Southwest to say the least. So definitely hopeful that they'll be able to get back on track with some additional aircraft once they are able to get those. And I also believe they have uh, slowed down the retirement of their Boeing 737-700 aircraft to compensate for the lack of aircraft that they will have uh, with the 737 MAX as of right now. They still do have several 737 MAX 7s on order, and who knows when those will be reaching the skies as well. Definitely not in this 2024 year, but possibly next year or beyond. So we'll have to see what happens for the Southwest 737 MAX 8 and beyond. Uh, speaking of this route, this is New Orleans to St. Louis. Southwest is the only airline to currently serve this route. I think Frontier may add this one at some point as they've been adding a bunch of routes like New Orleans to St. Louis in other cities. So we'll see if they do choose to add this one, but that's the only airline I could see adding it as of right now but yeah southwest definitely holds the market share i think it's twice a day so definitely cool to see that and uh, i wanted to talk about the st louis focus city operation because it is a really interesting one here for southwest so of course st louis has a really rich history between twa and american airlines as both of those airlines had significant presence at uh, st louis for a very long time particularly twa with all the operations they had and they flew to many cities out of the airport for you know, uh, decades. Uh, so that was really cool. But then, of course, uh, after the 2001 merger with American Airlines, American tried to take over St. Louis, and they had about three years there where they tried and it just wasn't happening with their, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? The word I'm looking for is... Uh, uh, the battle between the Chicago and Dallas hubs, having three of them within that proximity just wasn't working. And Delta's also ran into these issues in the past as well. So what happened with that is American concentrated their operations to Dallas and Chicago, really backed off of St. Louis, but then they tried again around 2006, 2007, added some of those routes back to give it one final push. And that one was unsuccessful for a variety of reasons, but the dagger on that was certainly the recession of 2008 for aviation. And that was it for St. Louis on those operations. However, Southwest did start this operation, I think in the mid 80s uh, is when they really started to get St. Louis going and they added a variety of cities. Uh, I think New Orleans has been around for decades. I know the Tulsa St. Louis route, which will be the next flight if we're able to make that flight. That one's been around since like 1983. So it's been around for, I think over like four years now, which is really cool and certainly an essential function of the network. So really cool. But the main point that I want to make here about why Southwest continues to operate this to this day is just because of how many cities get linked uh, to it that wouldn't get linked otherwise. So a really good example is Tulsa. With the two daily flights, despite these two daily flights not filling up completely every single day, there's a bunch of cities on the East Coast like Boston, LaGuardia, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and many others that prove critical to Southwest that otherwise, you know, it would be tough for passengers to get to. So, for example, uh, the Boston day trip that I did a couple months ago, it was either through St. Louis with good times, easy connections, and very reasonable layovers, or flying all the way out to Denver and then coming back down. So that just shows you how limited these neck, these flights are out of Boston, but the critical component here is that Tulsa doesn't have Baltimore. Tulsa doesn't have some of these cities that Boston does have. So St. Louis is this middle city where people will be able to connect on. Another great example is Atlanta. Uh, went on to Atlanta a few months ago as well, and St. Louis was the easiest uh, connection, and it got there the soonest, which was the reason that I picked it. I'm fine with long layovers in normal circumstances. However, when you're trying to get somewhere to go plane spotting, you know, you kind of need the quick side itinerary. So that's really the huge function of St. Louis. And again, this flight doesn't fill up out of Tulsa all the time. 
but it still performs well. And, you know, similar story for New Orleans here. This flight was completely full, which is awesome for a Monday evening here. Uh, it was peak time. We were right around uh, Memorial Day. So, you know, you would expect that to be the case. But even the other routes out of St. Louis, I've walked around that Terminal E area and have seen load factors that have been really good. Now, there have been some that have been pretty tough, especially in the winter going north. Minneapolis, Milwaukee, and some of those cities have really struggled during those times. And I've seen numbers that I won't say out loud because of how low they've been. But there's been a bunch of essential functions like Tampa, Sarasota, uh, Fort Lauderdale. All of those have been full every time I've uh, came through the tournament. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Denver, you know, the bigger operations that you would expect to be full. And then they have flights to Cancun as well, which have been very successful among others. So it's a really essential operation and, <clears throat> excuse me, it's really the last uh, the last link here for St. Louis. So I think Southwest will continue this operation for a long time to come. I don't think that they're gonna concentrate at all because that local community is really strong and they definitely need flights to Florida and other places that those passengers wanna go in conjunction with all the connecting opportunities that I talked about previously. So sorry that that was a little bit of an explanation, but I've never heard anybody really explain the logic of the St. Louis operation. So I thought I would. And if there's any complimentary thoughts you have, feel free to go uh, and comment those below. I also believe Southwest does transport quite a bit of cargo in the St. Louis. I know St. Louis has several operations there that they need cargo for, so that also could be a possibility of why Southwest still considers this a really good market for them. So if anybody has any additional thoughts, let me know, but thought I'd give some uh, complimentary thoughts to kind of take our mind off of the connection in St. Louis. Uh, speaking of which, there's just going to be one more if we can make it. We're currently coming in St. Louis. I have a really good feeling about this one because now I'm under a Southwest connection, so hopefully they'll be able to hold the plane for me. We'll have to see, but nevertheless, again, this flight's an hour behind and i believe i had an hour and 10 minute connection in st louis so uh certainly very glad that the timing worked just perfectly on this we took off just in time but we'll just have to see what we can do uh so definitely uh really excited for this and uh for the route it's uh about an hour and 15 minutes or so uh but we go straight up pretty much uh dead north through mississippi and then passing right over memphis a little bit of arkansas and then getting right there into missouri before coming into st louis so uh the last topic i want to mention here about this particular flight uh, rather what you can expect here is there's going to be several Southwest trip ports coming up. We have a day trip to Denver that will be a video and we also have some flights over to Indianapolis once again. So I'll make those as efficient as I can. But once we get past that uh, last Indianapolis flight, then we are really going to be cooking with some very unique content. So expect to see that more in the recap video wherever we end up with this particular trip and definitely stay on the lookout for all the upcoming in-flight videos here. But nevertheless, why don't we just go ahead and get straight into the descent in the conclusion. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And also, sorry, this was a night flight. It wasn't anticipated to be, but that's just how the cookie crumbled on this particular day. So let's go ahead and get into this. So we'd come over kind of the east side of the Mark Twain National Forest area in the uh, eastern part of Missouri. And then that would take us into St. Louis. So we're going to be landing on runway, I believe. I want to make sure I get it right. So I apologize, but I'm pretty sure it's 12 right, uh, which would take us on a right base there after our right downwind. It's the far south runway here at St. Louis. And that is actually runway 11. I'm glad I checked. So we're going to be landing on runway 11 today, which is not uncommon. That's a pretty standard uh, runway for landing there. So that takes us uh, pretty much uh, past St. Louis downtown and that uh, brings us back around on the other side of the Missouri River for our landing today. So anyways, for the actual flight, it was really calm, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Again, Southwest does a great job with all their operations and despite this flight being delayed, obviously worked on my situation, but I know there's many passengers here that likely are going to miss connect. So nevertheless, uh, we can do our best here. But I did want to mention actually that this plane went on to Minneapolis and I believe there was 18 through passengers onto Minneapolis. So good job by Southwest for recognizing the demand between New Orleans and Minneapolis and making a quick uh, one stop, no plane change operation for those 18 folks on this particular evening. So nevertheless, uh, let's go ahead and land into St. Louis here on runway 11. It was a really great flight, really enjoyed it. Southwest does an awesome job as I was just talking about. And overall, this flight was great. And I, once again, I apologize that there wasn't much light to go off of, but hopefully my in-flight assessment made up for that. So nevertheless, so let's go ahead and land on runway 11 here at St. Louis International Airport. I really hope all of you enjoyed this and let's go ahead and touch down.
St. Louis, everybody. We have a relatively short taxi over to our gate today, so let's go ahead and take it on over there. Alrighty, everybody, so this time, unlike the Frontier flight, I'm not in the front of the plane. I am in the back this time, so welcome to St. Louis International Airport, but now we have to eagerly await whether we can get off this plane in time to make the connection. Unfortunately, there was many other people making connections, and it was just a brimmed flight, so I wasn't able to get off uh, early, so I'm just going to have to wait here and see what happens. But nevertheless, that will do it for today's trip port. I really hope all of you enjoyed this. We have one final attempt to try to make it home tonight, so will we do it? We'll have to see, and definitely stay on the lookout for that. Did I make my connection? In part three as that will go into all the detail you need to know and then the follow-up trip report if we are able to make it there regardless so i really hope all of you enjoyed this i'm looking super forward to seeing if we can make the connection our plane's over at gate e14 and we're currently at e18 so that certainly helps that we're only two gates down from where we need to be but we're in 24f and we got to wait for all these passengers to get off so will southwest hold the plane will we be able to make the flight we shall see but nevertheless that'll do for today's video everybody thank you all so much for watching one thank each and one of you for watching my name is Roger of aviation take these here, everybody. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do you love and love you do? My name is Redder of Aviation. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon as Redder of Aviation is signing off.